Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're talking about the Mark 18 CQBR rifle. Now this is a relatively uh, complex weapon system because there's been several iterations of it. Uh, but we're going to start off immediately with the history of where this thing came from. During the original SOTMOD program, oh, I'd say around 2003-2004 time period, it started off as what was called a CQBR, the Close Quarters Battle Receiver. Uh, it was designed as a drop-in receiver on an M4, a lower receiver uh, for use in close quarters battle, along with the uh, SPR, of the Mark uh, Mark 12 series, uh, was a drop-in receiver originally, but then they ended up coming up to be their own weapon systems, uh, which is the Mark 18. So when you hear CQBR, it refers to just the upper receiver, and then when you hear Mark 18, Mark 18 is the complete weapon system, where it had a lower receiver and so forth. Now, a lot of people are going to be wanting to ask, what is the correct configuration that these came in? Uh, was this ever done? Well, I'm definitely not going to say this was never done, because you had a certain way these, these came out of Crane, Indiana, but you also have, uh, as soon as they got to their units, uh, people would customize them. So you would see them with different stocks, different pistol grips, uh, different accessories. And there was a lot of approved parts that, uh, if those parts were not available at the time, there were ones that were supplemented. Uh, I will give you an example of uh, while I was at Colt, we were making um, Mark 18 Mod O's, as you see right here, complete rifles, uh, where we had you know the, you know, the uh, M4A1 lower receivers and so forth, and they left with a ARMS number 40L backup site. And uh, I had asked uh, the guy in charge of manufacturing, I said, these are Mark 18s, why are they not with the LMT sites? They said, we didn't have access to the LMT sites, so they were not going to uh, hold up production because of a specific site. So they could be delivered uh, with different types of sites, uh, different types of equipment, if, if need be. Uh, you know, you didn't see anything on the upper level for as far as like bolts, bolt carriers, and uh, handguards, and things like that. That would all remain the exact uh, specification. But things such as rear sights could be swapped around uh, you know, in, in need if there was a, a lack of availability of them. So we start off life as a CQBR, uh, which we had a standard M4 upper receiver. Uh, we had a standard uh, bolt carrier group. And we would have a Knight's Riss or RAS. Um, the original ones were the Riss, and then it came to the RAS uh, M4. Uh, those were the two different versions of this. And basically to do with how they attached underneath, which was the difference between the Riss and the RAS. It was a standard front sight base. The barrel started life uh, as a M4 barrel, 14 and a half inch, and then it was cut down to 10.3 inches. Now, the reason it went down to 10.3 inches was, according to SOCOM, that was the shortest they could go to accept a, a sound suppressor which had to do with the bayonet lug, uh, that if you were to insert that too far back, the bayonet lug wouldn't interfere with uh, it being. So they wanted the shortest barrel that they could possibly have. And that came with originally a, a cut-back carrying handle. You would have a modified uh, carrying handle, which later on LMT would go ahead and, and make one like this that would become standard issue. But it originally was uh, cut down. And the original site, as you see here, uh, was a Wilcox mount with an aimpoint comp 2 on there. So that was the way that it was delivered. Also, it had for a flash suppressor, it was a uh, Knight's Armament uh, M4 CQD, I believe it was, uh, flash suppressor. And it had the vertical pistol grip. So that was your standard receiver. Along comes the Mark 18 Mod O. Now, the Mark 18 Mod O was adopted by the Navy, not just SOCOM. Uh, it was used on board ships. It was uh, for, for, bo for boarding crews and such, because moving around in the ships, we had a really close quarter environment. Uh, the shorter overall system was a much was a much better option. So to make the Mark 18 Mod O's, what they did was the Navy had a significant number of M16A1s uh, in their inventory that they were getting ready to destroy. So what they did was they took the lower receivers off of those M16A1s and off the bolt carriers as well. Uh, and what they did was they started the bolt carriers in the CQBR. They took the M16A1 lowers and they removed the uh, stock assembly, and they put on a standard four-position receiver extension with the LMT Gen 1 SOT mod stock. Gen 1 basically means it didn't have the CQ, uh, detachable CQD uh, detachment points here. They had also in inserted a uh, CQD receiver extension plate, which had uh, three different types of slots here where you could attach your sling to. Uh, they had kept the lower receiver stock with the fully automatic trigger mechanism. They laser engraved on the magazine well the symbol that had crane, it had uh, the Navy symbol, and it had a uh, Mark 18 Mod O uh, on it as an identification mark. And that was the way they were they were basically issued on ships. Uh, and when they first went to SOCOM, uh, that's how they were. 
Now, of course, once they got to SOCOM, you would have different options for sites. Uh, you would have different uh, you know, optics that were available because you had part of the SOPMOD kit, you had all kinds of different optics. That would include the ACOG, it would include EOTEX, it would include different different options that they would have. And then we went to what we call the Mark 18 M4A1 CQBR Block 1. And the Block 1, what that basically meant was you had a made the major changes were lower receiver. It was a standard M16A2 or an M4 lower receiver. They would cross out the M4, and as you'll see from the picture, you'll see how it was re-stamped. They also would have fully automatic trigger, trigger mechanisms. They would not have uh, the, the burst. That's the one thing that the Navy and the uh, and SOCOM never went with. In fact, the M16A3, which is the most unheard of of the M16 models, was, was Navy. And that was a standard M16A2 with an, a safe semi and auto. Uh, they never went for the burst mechanism. The, all the uh, the Block 1s did have the RAS system. It was not a RIS. It was a standard M4 RAS system. And the LMT uh, rear sights, the, the, the LMT manufactured rear sights were very, very commonplace. But you could also see Montech sights on there. You could see the ARMS uh, 40Ls on there. There was no one way. Uh, again, it had to do with parts availability, and not to mention when it got to the unit, what that particular seal or whoever it was issued uh you know liked about it uh it also had a sound suppressor available for it which was the uh, the nice armament qdss nt4 uh, they were also often issues with it with a uh, pec4 which was the uh, the laser uh, aiming sight which was the the relatively long version it was a it was generally put on the top here and it was relatively long and bulky uh it also had a uh the flashlight as you see on here this is the Surefire M962. This was the one that was originally on the CQBR. It was also used on the Block 1. There's also a model M952 site, which again, when you when you'd see flashlights, you could go on the internet and see pictures of, of soldiers in action and it's still kind of in use with these rifles. And you could see something else. Uh, again, there was no one way that it was. There was a, you know, preference had a lot to do with it and part and availability. We'll see a aimpoint, an aimpoint comp QRD uh, site on here as well that was often issued. The version that you see here is, uh, this is my personal uh, Mark 18 Mod O. Uh, major difference between this and the other ones, obviously, is this is not fully automatic. This is a, a, it's a Colt lower receiver. What I did with this thing here is I have a, uh, I'm, I'm not particularly fond of the Knight's, Knight's armament uh, sound suppressors. I'm a little bit more fond of the Silencer Co. So I've got a Silencer Co. sound suppressor on here. Um, the barrel is all LMT uh, as well as the upper receiver. And I want to say something about LMT on this as well. As I mentioned earlier, the CQBR barrels were manufactured from M4 barrels that were cut down. Well, Carl Lewis had worked with SOCOM on the development of the CQB barrel. Carl Lewis had manufactured many of the Mark 18 uh, 10.3 barrels for SOCOM. However, as you may or may not know, Colt had a complete monopoly on the M4 with the sole source. So nobody could do anything for their M4 but them. So they protested. They won. Carl Lewis could no longer manufacture those barrels. So Colt went into production of the uh, Mark 18 barrels. Now, uh, again, Colt, even though they did not manufacture or design these barrels prior to, they did not design. Uh, they got the, the data from SOCOM, and they started production of them, and they made them. Uh, Carl made them uh, for, you know, for export sales and commercial sales. But uh, he was truly the father of the uh, Mark 18 uh, barrel, to say the least. But uh, that's the sole source, basically, is what, uh, what booted him out of it. But uh, the rifle is, uh, is accurate, it's reliable, it's compact, it's light. Uh, it does everything that the original one was, was uh, designed to do. Uh, ballistically, with the 10.3-inch barrel, you lose a lot of power out of the 5.56. Uh, so the M855, you did have some issues with them going right through targets. They, they would not yaw, they would go right through. Uh, you did have some loss in penetration. But with the introduction of the Mark, uh, the Mark 262 ammunition for the Mark 12 uh, SPRs, it was found when you put that ammunition in the 10.3 barrels, it worked perfect. That ammunition, as you can see right here, is available from Black Hills. It is their 77 grain OTM. Uh, this is basically identical to the Mark 262 ammunition. Uh, this is probably, well, in my opinion, it is the most accurate match grade ammunition in the market for a 5.56. Five, uh, it is. I think the holy grail for military cartridges for terminal performance. It's not designed for barrier performance. It's not designed for, uh, you know, to go through body armor. It will go through most body armor, um, but it's designed to stop human targets. 
SOCOM has used this universally in the Mark 12 SPRs, their M4A1s, as well as the Mark 18s. It is an, it's an incredible uh, round. You know, it's relatively expensive. It's an OTM round. It's an expensive round to manufacture. But uh, if you're looking for the ideal uh, round for self-defense, for, you know, for longer range shooting, you know, this is it. Now we're going to step forward into the M4A1 CQBR Block 2. Now this one it gets a little bit more complicated with the uh, with the Block 2. Now with the Block 2, I have to use some notes here because this is a very uh, this is fairly detailed. One of the confusions that I've had with this whole thing is trying to figure out the difference between the M4A1 CQBR Block 2 and the Mark 18 Mod 1. And from what it looks like, uh, it appears those are the same thing. Uh, I'm sure maybe one of you guys may know a little more than I do on this. But looking at the configurations of them, they look like they're about identical. What we have here is a, is a clone of the, uh, the CQBR Block 2. And again, to me, it looks identical to the, or to the Mark 18 Mod 1. But we'll see several differences. Uh, one of the biggest differences you're going to see is the optic. Uh, you're going to see an EOTech 553 on here. Uh, this is also set up for night vision as well. Uh, you can also see the EOTech EXPS3. And for longer range, you can definitely see an ACOG as well. Uh, the stock you're going to see on here is your, this is, this has got a, a, uh, a flat dark earth CTR stock. You can also see a SOT mod stock, CTR, or many, many others. This is another one of those things where, uh, it was up to the individual and what they liked. The pistol grip, you see an ergo grip on here. You can see an A2 grip. You can see, you know, Myads or Mos or whatever. It was another one of those things that you would see a lot of different, uh, different versions of. The bolt carrier is something else I do want to mention on all of these. There is a three, there's three part modifications that have been done, uh, since, oh, I would say 2003, 2004 on the Mark 12 that carried over to the, uh, Mark 18 series. Due to some issues that SOCOM had had, uh, with failures to extract and eject and so forth, uh, there were three parts that were modified, uh, that in fact, when Colt would build Mark 18s, they had to utilize them as well. The first one was is the rubber O-ring that you, you place around the, uh, the extractor spring. Uh, that was a major enhancement, especially for these shorter barrels. Now, these short barrels, you can have a cyclic rate when they're brand new around you know 700 to 950 rounds a minute. But once you get up around 6,000 rounds, your gas port gets a little bit of road, you can you know, be well over 1,025. And with further use, you can go beyond that. So you're basically opening up your bolt a lot quicker than you normally would. The O-ring that goes around the extractor increases the your uh, extraction force by four times. So what that means is insurance. What that means is, is you can even remove the original spring that's in there and put that in there and you'll still have three times the uh, force that you had originally with the spring. So that was put on there. Number two was the ejector spring. And it was interesting because uh, it was a space age material that was used to increase the force and increase the longevity. And the third part was the McFarland gas ring. It was the one piece gas ring instead of the uh, the three, you know, beer can aluminum gas rings. That was done on all of these bolt carrier groups, uh, as well as the Mark 12s. Uh, it was a major enhancement, and it was done on all of the M4s. Uh, that was an enhancement that the, that the Navy used uh, all the way around that was, it was an excellent enhancement. Now, all three of these utilize the PRI gas buster charging handle. And there are some of the Mark, uh, 18 mod ones I've seen that did not have it. The PRI gas buster charging handle, uh, due to the fact that these guns were being suppressed, you can see how it goes underneath the stock and over. What that does is that seals off the bottom to prevent gas from coming back to into the shooter's face. That is a major uh, enhancement. In fact, the Navy looked at it as a safety uh, a safety enhancement uh, due to the fact that it kept particulate and, uh, and gas off of the shooter's face. The Block 2 and Mod 1 changed to the, uh, to the Micro Knight's uh, rear backup site. Also utilize the CQDR. Then as we move forward, we'll see where it gets really different. Uh, this here was uh, where they switched out from the, rim, the, the Knight's Armament Wrist and RAS to the uh, Daniel Defense Mark 18 Wrist 2, uh, Flat Dark Earth. Now, this is a much heavier, uh, significantly heavier than the, than the RAS. And also, you'll notice there's no front sight base. Uh, what they did was they went with a longer handguard. They went with the Mark 12 uh, low-profile gas block. They went with the uh, Mark 18 Daniel Defense Rust. Now, Daniel Defense also had supplied some of the, the barrels to SOCOM as well. Uh, their barrels are, are cold hammer forged. Uh, they're also uh, chrome lined. They provided some, but you'll you know, mostly see a lot of the Colt barrels. 
you have on the front here, you have a folding uh, knight's uh, front sight base. You're going to see an itemized list of all of these uh, components in the notes uh, on, the, on this video. Uh, you'll also see uh, all the part numbers and stuff where you can obtain these. Most of these parts that you see here are available from Brownells. So you're going to have a very long detailed list of every component that's on here uh, on those notes. So you'll be able to see uh, what they are and you'll be able to get them. We have listed the manufacturers of these other parts that are not available from Brownells on the notes as well. So you could uh, be able to find them without too much of an issue. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the flashlight. The flashlight used on the Block 2 and the, and the Mark uh, 1 uh, were also different. Instead of using the Surefire, they went with these uh, three, three X sites made manufactured by Insight Technology. The one that you see here that's uh, the Flat Dark Earth has the national stock number, and this was used specifically uh, by the military. You can find black versions of this as well if you prefer your guns in black, uh, like I do. Uh, the next thing is here you'll see instead of the, uh, the PEC-2, you'll see the uh, LA-5. Uh, this is the more modern, more compact uh, laser aiming module. Uh, you have a floodlight on here as well as the, the IR light. And to attach all that, it came with this button mechanism where you have one for the white light and one for the laser aiming module. So all these parts uh, are available. And also you have a CQD uh, attachment point for a sling, which is placed on there as well. You have these ladder covers as well. Uh, the sound suppressor on there is a Surefire Solcom RC, as you see right here, uh, with a four-prong uh, flash suppressor. So this is uh, sort of the latest, uh, latest version. And it is, uh, you'll see them in use uh, still today. The Navy EOD version of this, uh, the, the biggest difference was was the front handguard, which was the Voltor Cast VL. Uh, that was pretty much only used by those guys. Everybody has to have their own special flavor. But uh, these things have been very popular for as far as clones are concerned. Um, the lower receivers, now the people are doing the 80%, they're, they're doing exact clones of those. Uh, another thing that you'll see on these as well is you'll see here the uh, UID labels. Uh, there's a, different, a couple of different companies that you can uh, get those from as well. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the range with, with uh, my Mark 18 Mod O here, and we're going to put a few rounds through it. The Mark 18 system, as you see here, is fairly complicated because there are so many different versions of it. Uh, the versions that you're seeing here are ones that have uh, some of the issue parts, uh, but you will also see a lot of different components. You know, there's not any one particular way, but uh, where these are as close as we can show you as what the uh, way these would be issued out of crane. If you want to build them, there's several different kinds. I mean, all the parts are still available for all of them for you to be able to purchase. 
you know, a lot of the Mark 18 Mod O's, um, you'll see a lot of different sound suppressors on them as well as these. Uh, this particular rifle here was, uh, this was painstakingly done uh, by a good friend of mine to make it as close as possible to the, to the, uh, you know, the Mod 1 or the CQDR that you actually uh, could have every single part that was the same. But uh, you can mix and match these parts. Um, as I said, all of these parts that you see here are all, they're all labeled in the notes. They're all labeled with part numbers. Um, and if you're interested in buying them, that's a good resource. If you have any questions regarding this, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.